Medic! Oh, Jesus. What is that? Beth, we should go. Millions of dollars worth of cocaine fell from the sky this morning in Knoxville, Tennessee. There's more of this out there. They dumped it somewhere. I'm looking for my daughter. Forest is a dangerous place. Hey, Henry, check it out. Something got into it. A deer, maybe. A lot of cocaine was lost. I need you to go and get it. No, 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 don't eat that, don't eat that. Let's see what kind of effect that has on me. The bear, it fucking did cocaine. A bear did cocaine. There was a bear. A bear? It was fucked. Hey, that's inappropriate. You're safe. Bears can't climb trees. Of course I can! <gasps> huh? Higher, baby. Oh, shit! Get higher, baby! Oh, no. It kind of seems like the thing that stays with a man forever. Higher, baby. Apex Predator. <laughs> High on cocaine. <laughs> Out of his mind. Oh! oh man, you fucked. What the fuck is wrong with that bear? Shoot it, man! Bear speeder! Get higher, baby, and don't ever come down. We have such good luck in nature. <laughs> And welcome back to the Movie Pope Podcast. And today we've got another one. We've got Cocaine Bear, a movie about a coked out bear in 1985 Georgia who's going around killing a bunch of rednecks at a mountain state park. Um, but before we dive in, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and please share this video with everyone that you know. And share the podcast with everyone else that you know. We are on Spotify and other podcasting platforms, and we are working to get set up on different social media accounts we are on x um but we really haven't put, put out that much tweets but we are working to get on um get set up on instagram because we know that's where all the cool kids are and we definitely want to ingratiate ingratiate ourselves with the cool kids because they're cool uh, <laughs> but um but lee how are you doing today you uh you're taking care of yourself you're not you know throwing a fit over any uh any movies or tv shows you've seen over the holidays no, no, I, I think for the most part, everything, uh, what is normal, I know we're uh, um, going to be doing the worst movie of 2023, which uh, I'm not looking forward to. Uh, well, I guess I'm looking forward to it, but not looking forward to reliving the movie, so to speak. Um, but yeah, other than that, uh, excited for 2024 and, um, you know, what cool things are going to be out there that we'll be able to watch. So hopefully we'll find some good things and i'm sure we'll find just as many uh bad things that we'll have fun discussing um good or bad well i was gonna say too because um because for the most part 20 you know the you know the other half of 2023 has been pretty quiet due to the due to the strike um, yes so now that so now everything's you know is you know hunky dory for the most part we can go back to or sorry well holly we can go back to making it can, you know, more content for us to, you know, rip on later on down the road. Um, I am waiting for Napoleon to come out on streaming because I do want to do a, a, um, a review called Napoleon versus Waterloo. Um, and it'd be a good way for us to school a certain Mr. Uh, Mr. Scott about, about how to make a good Napoleon film. Um, especially when you're doing, a characterization of a man who is very complex in his uh in his ambitions and not just snoring like a pig and wanting to get you know into someone's pants on a regular basis even when they're in the middle of fighting a battle 
God, I still can't get that image out of my mind. Like, like what the what the hell? Um, I haven't seen it, so I guess I'll I'll find out <laughs> what it happened. Well, 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 that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I'm 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 I can't wait for it to go into stream. So then you can check it mm -hmm. out, and then yes. and then we can do a review, and then you can give me your take and let me know if you if you found you know the the oinking just as annoying, um, both in the literal and figurative sense. <laughs> um, but um, but today we're reviewing Cocaine Bear, and and. And, and and this was actually a, a pretty a, a, a pretty odd choice, at least in my book, because I thought this was a movie you would never ever want to take a look at, just because the premise just sounds so weird. What what prompted you to decide on Cocaine Bear? Yeah, I mean, I, I think it's just one of those things where you know you just kind of watch absurd things from time to time. I mean, uh, there's a lot of weird things like Sharknado, right? Like I remember the first one. That came out, I'm like, oh my gosh, like this is just absolutely over the top. And uh, I think after a while, I just kind of accepted what I was watching and I started to th thoroughly enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess he just kind of had that Stockholm syndrome for the movie. Um, and then over time, it just kind of grows on you um, like, uh, like a vine. So it just kind of happens. So, you know, seeing something, I mean, it's called Cocaine Bear. Um, so, you know, I'm going into with the mindset of I'm going to watch something super absurd. And well, we got that. Um, and I guess depending on well, you got uh, what you're looking loads. for, what you're a team with, uh, you might thoroughly enjoy it or not. I think it received generally po like s slightly positive reviews. I think Rotten Tomatoes was just over sixty percent for critics and like seventy seventy percent for audience. So I think people seem to enjoy it maybe a little bit more than not. Um, so it did seem to have a, a slightly positive spin on it. So yeah, I, I, and 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 the, and the thing is, is that um, you know, was that this was based on a true story, um, because uh, and and I looked into it too. Well, I mean, extremely it, loosely based right, on a true story. Right, right. But the general idea is that you know that some cocaine was dumped, you know, in Georgia in the mid '80s. It happened to have been found right. by a bear, and they were tr and, and the police were trying to apprehend the people who were, you know, responsible for um. You know, for for this cocaine operation, um, yes. I mean, yes. I mean, it's, I mean, ser I mean, I mean, I, and 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 I, and, I'll, and I'll just say this too. I mean, I, I mean, I found the backstory a bit, you know, you know a bit interesting. Um, just you know, just because if anyone's a fan of 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 the show Narcos, I mean, there there's just something that's so fascinating into the whole into the whole world of these drug smugglers just trying to bring in these illicit. Um, you know substances into the u.s and the law enforcement who are on their tail to try to curtail their operations um so so lee why don't you go ahead and just give us a a, a quick overview of what of what cocaine bear is besides it being about a coked out bear i mean honestly is there more to the story than a bear being cooked out because i mean honestly uh, as i was watching it so you know i kind of thought a little bit about the cold opening, right? So you got the the um, guy dropping the drugs out of the plane. Um, clearly, you know, long-term plan. Don't really know what you're thinking with that because um, throwing all those bags outside of a plane, like individually, um, I don't know about you, but it's going to be a cold day in hell before you find any of those bags unless you have some type of tracker on them. Well, just um, also, so also, cool. keep in, also keep in mind the way he was acting, you kind of get the feeling he was... Um... He was kind of helping himself to some of the wear before. Oh yes, of course. Yes. I mean, yes, I mean, so absolutely. so like, so obviously you're not going to be in the best, you know, mindset right off the bat. Correct. Yes. <laughs> this was obviously not a well thought out plan. Um, it just was like you know one of those things where it's like okay, um, and really I was thinking more too for Sid, right? It's played by Ray Liotta. Like I don't know what his whole plan is, but we'll eventually get there. Um, as far as um, him recovering. Um, all those uh, drugs that's out there. So, um, so you kind of have that. Um, so it kind of sets up the cocaine being on the ground, um, and, and then you meet these two characters um, who, you know, I kind of, you know, wondering how much of a role they're gonna play. So you have uh, Olaf, um, the male character, and you have uh, Elsa. Um, I thought the names were kind of interesting. <laughs> Uh, I mean, right. ob obviously, Olaf. obviously a nod to a certain Disney movie, by the way. Yes, yes. <laughs> so you had Olaf and Elsa. The fact that those are the two together makes me kind of wonder what people are doing on the internet, but I won't get into that. Um, but 
it, you kind of have these two characters that are camping um and you know obviously they're talking about their marriage so you know this is a typical um you know death flag that gets thrown up right you know oh let's talk about our marriage as we're uh sitting here doing this stuff um and i remember they they find the bear and the character olaf is in there and you know he's like looking at it and he sees the bear is just like acting super erratic and he's like the bear you see it's like slamming its head against a tree and and Olaf's like, huh, I think there's something wrong. Let's leave. And immediately I kind of got perked up. I'm like, oh wow, it's it's a character that's gonna be in this like survival type of movie. And we have a smart character. This is typically departure because in most of these, the characters have to be so stupid that they almost have to like throw themselves into all the events because like a rational person would just be gone and not have to deal with it. It's so like, oh, this is interesting. And then his fiance Elsa is like, oh no, I wouldn't worry about it. It's just a bear. It's it's fine. And I'm like, oh no, she's stupid. So then we're, we're sitting there. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm just gonna watch one of these, one if not both these characters die. Um, and then you know the the bear just mauls Elsa, um, and you know rips off her leg. I think you, you see like the leg or the arm. I forget. There's some type of yes, it's a leg appendage. It's the leg yes, that gets thrown you, yeah. to Olaf, and he's like flipping out. Oh, oh, yes, Olaf, exactly. by, Olaf! Olaf, by the way, um, is played by the same guy for, who was in, who played a wildling in Game of Thrones. I forget Game of Thrones. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I forget, I forget the um, Game of Thrones yeah. character's name, but you know, I just thought it was funny. Yes. Yes, I, I just yeah yeah so absolutely so so this is kind of I guess the two cold openings right that we kind of get to set things up. Um, you know, and I guess my whole thing is like it got played very seriously. And I think that was my issue through a lot of the movie was sometimes it felt super real, and then sometimes it just was absolutely off the walls. Uh, and I think the fact that it kind of didn't know what lane to pick kind of caused me not to really enjoy it because it's like, okay, that felt like a very real bear attack. Like, are we supposed to be treating as horror? Um, and then there's an attack later on that is totally like comedic in how it's presented. I'm like, uh, I don't like this yo-yo back and forth. Like to me, that didn't deal with it. So we have those two openings. And then after that, I don't really even really know how to describe it. Right. So I think one of my big challenges with watching this is like, yes, I'm watching something called cocaine bear. I don't really care too much about the characters, but wow, they just like threw so many different characters at us. It just felt nauseating to do with it. It's like, you're a cocaine bear. You're not reservoir dogs. You don't need to have all these people in this. Like, just pick a few, throw a bunch of random people in there and just be done with it. Because for a 90 minute movie, they just try to throw everything at you. So you got like, you got the two drug dealers, right? Which I think is kind of, I don't want to say the heart of the movie, but they're kind of like the, the biggest people, I think, with it. Um, I, mean, they're, so I, mean, I mean, they're tied to the cocaine. I mean, they are sent to go retrieve. Um, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. They're not good so. characters, right? Like, <laughs> don't get me wrong. They, they are not people that we're rooting for. I think they at least have the most going on for whatever narrative they're wanting to do in a story based upon uh, right. a bear that's doing cocaine. Right, uh, right. So, uh, so, you, so you got these two drug dealers that are, you know, going out there. One of them um, is uh, Ray Liotta's son, um, character's named Sid. Um, so you have the two of them going out there um, to find this cocaine. Um, then you have this other group of people. You have this um, mom looking for her her daughter and I guess her daughter's friend, Henry, that's also out there. So you kind of got this, like, two drug dealers looking for cocaine and then you got like this like little group of people that are going out there um for something obviously unrelated to the cocaine um i think for me the little kid henry i think mm -hmm. he was the best part of it um and i think he was the best part of it for me just because he acts so outlandish like he doesn't act like a kid like he acts like a 30 year old or I guess he acts like an eight-year-old that is trying to be a thirty-year-old. Um, but, that, but, just... but that's but that's what you do as a kid. You try to act, you know, more older than you are. I mean, I mean, I'm oh, sure you've done well, it. Like, I'm sure okay, you've done but, it, and I've done let's it. Let's be so. real here, right? 
I don't think the kid is going to be super, is not going to be like an expert on, you know, drugs and everything like that. Like, I, I'm sure they might know it, but I, I think the fact that he was written as somebody that's like a little kid that is supposed to have all this knowledge about it just kind of made me laugh at its absurdity. Mm -hmm. um, I will give them props. I was not expecting to watch two kids in chest cocaine in this movie. That part I did not expect. I I thought I thought yes. they would just look at it and just run away, but no, they I thought that they would in their mouth. <laughs> yeah, I, I thought that they would do something else with it. Like I kind of was like, oh well, you know, maybe when they're about to do it, like the mom shows up, or like when they get close to it, but then like maybe they it just didn't work. <laughs> um, it just kind of got to the point where I just didn't really care. Like the characters weren't funny. Like to me, you could have had like. What would have made more sense, right? You had the drug dealers, right? Because they're intricate yeah. to the story. Um, and, and maybe you have like one of the other groups in there. Like maybe you have, um, you know, the kids in there and like maybe they're, you know, keeping them hostage or something from the detective. Like there's just something you could do differently. But it just felt like you had all these like random plot threads that are just kind of showing up in the same place. And there's a cocaine bear in the background. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it just didn't work for me. So, um, you know, I think. The part where you know it it goes to the 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 cabin right where the park ranger is like that's kind of like where it starts to get like more and more absurd and then it's like chasing after them in the ambulance um and, and it's like okay like i wish there was more of that and you know when that started to happen i started to kind of feel like i was like just i was starting to get into the absurdity right i was accepting the madness for what it is because i'm literally watching a bear catch up to a speeding ambulance <laughs> and i'm like okay like maybe i can get behind this but then the whole end of it felt so flat and, and i'm just like okay you're super get barely a 90 minute long movie so which um so which group would you um would you say you know you know you know would have been you know would have been excised from from the script and they, they would have they would have carried on like normal because I think it was the teenagers. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, the teenagers for sure. They were totally useless. There was no point for them to be there. Like, one of them just kind of has it. I mean, you can keep other people in there, but we don't need to have so much focus on them. And I think that was the problem. Like, you know, have the park ranger up there. We only have to see her a few times. Like, we don't really have to understand her. Like, they have all this stuff where, you know, she's clearly, you know, has an attraction for the wildlife activists. Um he was paid, played by the guy from um, um, Modern Family. Yeah, just Jesse Tyler that. Ferguson. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah except he, um, except he had like, a mustache and not a beard. So. Yes. 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 So, so like you have that, and it's just like, what is this for? Like, why am I watching this? Do I care about their relationship? No, because they're just fodder for the cocaine bear. So it's like you know, if you want to have the, it's fine. But don't give them characterization because it's just wasting time. It's like, I just want to see them get mauled or I want to see something absurd happen. I'm not going to Cocaine Bear to care about the characters. So, like, you could keep these people in there, but just limit their screen time and focus more on what people are paying money to go see. Because to me, that's not needed. Um, you know, it's the kind of the same thing with, you know, with the 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 mom and the two kids there. like. You know, could you have been a part of the story? Sure. But really, they're just kind of there. And it's just like we're supposed to get some type of, oh, you know, the mom is accepting of the daughter. And, you know, we're just, you know, they're just trying to do their best. And it's just like, what is this? Like, this is not like this is not a movie <laughs> that I care about to get some type of sappy, like, you know, type of relationship thing. It's not what I'm there for. I'm there to watch Cocaine Bear do Cocaine Bear things. So I just, it, it was just something like that. I didn't feel like it, uh, it didn't delve enough into the absurdity or it wasn't on screen long enough for me to enjoy it. Um, so, like I said, to me, this really fell flat. This was definitely one of my least favorite movies of 2020. So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, you know, if, you know, if if the premise of the movie is, is to be absurd, it just needs to be consistently absurd from beginning to end, right? Absolutely. Or <laughs> you can build it up, like build it up as you can have it serious at the beginning, but then you could certainly build up to the absurdity, and I'd be fine with that too. But then you can't just 
plumb it back down. Because to me, the only really absurd thing was, like, yes, the the bear chasing after the the um, the uh, ambulance, right? So that part was obviously super over the top. Right. Um, and then I guess like the part where you know the the bear is like kind of. Uh, when the cop like opens up the the brick of cocaine and is spreading it out, and the bear is kind of like doing a dance, like I, I'm like, okay, that that's kind of funny. Like I'm I'm into that, but then like that to me is where it stopped, and then like everything like once Ray Liotta was like fully into the movie, it just uh -huh. fell flat. Like they just focus so much on these characters and their ability to survive that you don't really see Cocaine Bear up until the end. And then, like I said, it just feels flat. Like, you know, build up the absurdity, but it just needs to stay at the high level. You can't just bring it back down to just a normal, like, bear-related movie. So that's the part that got to me. Well, I mean, if we're going by that logic, then really the group we would have, you know, that we should have gotten rid of was was Carrie Russell and the kids. Because they were the ones who were the most grounded, you know, I guess, group out of, out of all of them. Because For sure, right? Yeah, because if you t if if you take if you took them out, then you know then logically they should just you know the, the whole the whole movie should just be absurd all the way through from, <clears throat> you know you, you know from you know from them you know you know at the gazebo where they're trying to figure out how the cop how fat guy got on top of a gazebo to going you know they're going down the waterfall and giving cocaine to not only the bear but the little baby cubs as well, you know, but. No, that's just that's just my take on it. Um, so, so I, I will say this. Um, I, I I know I know you have a, a a bit of an issue sometimes with 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 my choices and my reactions to certain movies. I I, I was don't, I was don't do this to me, Luca. I was genuinely laughing the entire time because God. I just, <laughs> no, no for, at what at what? Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead, go ahead. Let's let's hear it. I want to hear this. <laughs> Uh, can I can I just say I I, I just think it's funny. I, I'm I'm just trying to imagine you sitting in a movie theater watching a beer doing lines of cocaine for ninety minutes. But see, that would have been good. like that's what it, that's what it needed. Like I would have laughed like if like you just see it like there and you just see it like snort a line off the ground like that to me would have been great. But they don't have, like it. Just yeah. I'm. But let's hear. It. I want to hear your level of enjoyment of this. All right. So so I I I, I will say this. The seriousness didn't really bother me that that much. I I I really did I really didn't care about the fact that you know that you know that Carrie Russell's character was trying to be you know go out and be a good mother. I really wasn't paying attention to that element. I was mainly focused on the cocaine bear element, and I was focused on the fact that these were a bunch of people who were just taking themselves so seriously, only to be you know taken down by a coked out bear. And I'll go and, and 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 let me go further further into this. Um, you've got the park ranger, for instance. She's very she's very very much interested in getting Jesse Tyler Ferguson to notice her, um, and 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 it, she's also upset by the fact that because um, it was because she's got to deal with these teenagers, she's not able to get the bigger jobs. I think she mentioned. You know these were the these, you know these guys were the reasons why she didn't get into Yellowstone. So she's very much caught up in her own world, and very much seri you know very much serious in in what she's trying to do in terms of, of oh, yeah. she takes her job very serious. Right, right. Yeah. So so you have a very so you have a, uh, two you know two very serious or th I, I should say a bunch of very serious characters who are very much focused on their work, whether it's legal or illegal. And then you have an absurd element, this cocaine bear that's coming in here and doing these ridiculous things that just throws everything off kilter, right? Um, the, I, I, I mean, the fact that, I mean, I mean the, the fact that you would have, you know, a bear that's high on cocaine going around mauling people and then just disappearing, it, it, it's, I mean, I'm sorry, but it's just hilarious to me. I, that, 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 that's what I just it find is. so amusing. But, 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 yeah, I, I, but, but I will also say this. I just find it really, I just find it ridiculous. Just, just the way that they react towards each other, um, whenever in their, they're in that situation. Because, and, 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 and I'll even, and, and I'll even bring up, um, um, a favorite movie of ours, The Dark Knight, um, by Christopher Nolan, right? Because you remember, because you remember did you, what? Did we just bring up the Dark Knight and the Cocaine Bear review? Yes, yes, we are. <laughs> and I'm gonna. And I'm, and I'm, okay, I'm gonna okay. Go I'm with, sorry. Go ahead. Let's, I'm, let's I'm hear, gonna go into it. Let's so, hear this. Okay. 
so 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 you know how the so you know how in the interrogation room the joker basically tells batman you know you know they're you know basically these people have rules and everything and they like and they, they like to pretend they live by them but when the chips are down they freak out this is just a paraphrase right but you get the general idea of what of what joker's telling batman right that people will pretend to they, they, they like to act like everything's you know you know nice and normal until it isn't and they flip out as soon as you throw as soon as the cocaine bear starts going after people and start you know starts tearing people apart everybody just starts going ape shit um the park ranger for instance i mean she, she she she's going nuts just you know shooting everywhere she goes back into you know back into the station to you know to get more um get more bullets where she runs into those teens and you know and as much and, and as much as she you know she doesn't like these guys she realizes oh shit you know we've got a much bigger problem it's the spear that's apparently going around this well this black bear i should say that's going around attacking and mauling people so you so, so you have a bunch of these people who are very you know quote unquote serious um in what they're doing because there's nothing going on it's a very normal life it's a very you know it, it's it, you know it's it's business as usual it's a nine to five thing but then as soon as you throw in the element of the cocaine bear that's when you know you know shit hits the fan and everybody's just you know start, starting to act all wild and crazy and they're trying to figure out well what are we going to do we've never dealt with anything like this before and what's hilarious for me is the fact that you know you know th th that this bear is just behaving in, in in ways that they're not expecting because they're expecting the bear to play you know to act like you know a bear would normally do but then you have you know but then you have you know the, you know a bear just like tearing through the doors and 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 the teen is just standing there in front of the door and it's like what the hell you know is that and then the park ranger blows his head off and, and then everybody's just like flipping out and then the bear starts attacking everybody and then disappearing again does that mean, are, are, are you getting where i'm coming from here yeah no absolutely yeah i i think and like i said i i do agree with you right i think the level of absurdity was in there. I just felt like there wasn't enough of it for me to really get into it. Um, I think that was the biggest problem for me, right? So, like, you brought up some good points. Like, yes, absolutely. You know, you kind of got that, you know, element in there. You see these people all kind of doing this stuff. I just felt like it, it just felt like a bunch of, I guess, like, small like it's just a bunch of like random stories that all end with cocaine beer at the end of it. It's kind of like what kind of an it's kind of like flow it's, for a movie. It's kind of like when we reviewed uh, Treasure of Foggy Mountain, really, because it, it because in a way it sort of follows the same you know the same premise. It's just a bunch of random. I I, I guess you could say they're like random skits or random vignettes that are just stitched together by a common by a common theme. There's no really yes, yeah there's no real story to it. It's just this common theme that that's occurring. Yes, and oddly enough, they both occur yeah. in nature in, in in state parks. By the way, <laughs> yeah, no, there there is some, and there's both of them have a bear in it, right? Because there's a bear in uh, Foggy Mountain as well. That's um, true, but he, the, but he's uh, not on cocaine in the though. treasure room. So there's also a bear that plays an antagonist type role in it. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I I do agree with you. I think there's something. So I'm going to use Sharknado as an example, right? Because I, I think that one to me, um, kind of does it right. So you have Sharknado, right? And you know, I know it definitely has its detractors and people that enjoy it. Um, and I'm sure people that are tired of people talking about it. Um, but like to me, Sharknado does it well because like it kind of builds up to the idea of the the Sharknado part. Um, but with doing that, you also just kind of follow the main character as like he's trying to rescue his family. It's so, like there's this kind of like normal plot element to it. And the Sharknado is just kind of there all the time kind of creating this absurd antagonist for the group. So, but to me, I like that a lot more because it just focuses on a small cluster of characters and it doesn't bog you down with everything because really we just want to see more Sharknado, right? We want to see absurd shark things happening. Like that's what we're there for. I think that Cocaine Bear just wasn't on the screen enough for me to kind of get that same vibe from it. Like I think it was aiming for the same thing, but it's execution and needed to have more of the titular character in there for me to get it um and but i guess but, that would be kind of my my counter to that but uh, but another thing i wanted to bring up too because in, in, and i mentioned this in a, um, in a text um to you on monday night it, it it pretty much had predator vibes to it because it, you know what we're talking about now. 
Say what? No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, well, what about Predator? No, I was just saying it had it had Predator vibes to it because you're having a bunch of these people in this one location just trying to figure out where this cocaine bear is, and he just pops out of nowhere and attacks him and and then disappears. You know, I mean, I mean, what I at least for me, what I enjoyed about it enjoyed about it was the fact that you don't you didn't know where the bear was until the last minute. Because you would think that the bear's like you know somewhere out in the bushes, but then he pops up from behind a tree and then attacks you. So I kind of like so I kind of like the fact that when they show the bear, you know, I I w- w- what I like is the fact that you know is that the bear isn't in every single you know every single frame or in every single you know scene, you know, you know it's just you know it's just coming in and out and you know just keep, keeping everybody on their toes. That's that's what I think is is fascinating for me. But yeah, but I know I, I know I know I know in your case, if it's called Cocaine Bear, we need to see more of Cocaine Bear because that's why it's called Cocaine Bear. Yeah, uh, I mean, because I guess when I when I think about it, right, so you have the scene with the the ambulance, right, and obviously that's totally over the top, right? That's where like I think you accept what's happening, but then the next time you see it show up, and I might be wrong with this, so you correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like the next time it shows up is at the gazebo scene, right? With the, the yeah. police officer, right? Yeah, I think so, yeah. So that's that's the next time it shows up, but then it's just acting like normal, right? So it's hyper-aggressive and attacking these people in one scene, and then the next scene is just a normal bear um, that's trying to do stuff. And it's... I, I don't want to belabor a point, right? I don't want to drag it out but like to me that's where it's like okay like it would have been good like why not just like have the bear like scale the gazebo or something to get to the drugs or i mean it wasn't it wasn't very high so yeah exactly right like i mean they could just you know kind of say oh the cop got up there some magic way um i think he could have done the some same thing for the bear but like as i said it just like all of a sudden the bear starts to act like super i mean obviously not probably the reason why the bear in one instance is doing what it's doing going after an ambulance and, and attacking everybody I'm sorry you tried to like explain to me the drug effects in a movie called cocaine bear and why it is the way it is well yeah because i mean i mean you're making it sound like as if the bear needs to be high the entire time it it's needs like... to be crazy the whole time. I mean, I don't care if it's high or not. It just needs to be crazy. It's a cocaine bear. It's like it needs to do cocaine bear things. It's it's fine. I, I just like I said that that to me was where I was just like, nope. I just I'm not really following it now. It's just kind of whatever. So but yeah, I'm go go ahead. Well, well, can I just say as a disclaimer, you know, you know, at at no point um are are we endorsing. You know, anybody give cocaine to a bear to see what it does. Obviously, it's a very dangerous or and thing to do. Or 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 kids for, or dropping cocaine randomly in the woods for people to find. We do not endorse that at all. We think drugs are horrible and awful things that destroy and ruin people's lives. That being said, I mean, I I, I, I just think it's I, I just think it's kind of reasonable to assume you know, obviously the bear can do all these crazy things when you know when they're high as a kite, and then they kind of go back to being placid. And quote unquote normal until they get their next fix, which isn't too hard to find. Um, so, real quickly, um, I mean, I mean, were, were there any particular characters that stood out to you that you thought, huh, maybe, maybe they're all right, or, or at least they're tolerable, besides the cocaine bear? So, I, I would say Henry was fine to me, right? Like, I, I kind of liked him, the 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 younger kid. Um, as I said, he kind of gave me a few chuckles just at like how his character was, mm-hmm. um, because it was just something I wasn't expecting to hear from, you know, a kid of his age. Um, and, and I guess I, I would be lying if I said I didn't, I, I didn't care for Eddie and David's type of like bromance. Uh, I thought, you know, it was kind of enjoyable, um, to kind of see them and their, you know, kind of like friendship stuff. Um, everything else just fell flat, like, you know. The, the girl that was out there and Carrie Russell's character just totally was not amusing. Didn't really have anything. Didn't care about the park ranger and um, the wildlife activists. Um, I, Olaf shows up later, but like he just kind of gets killed off screen. Mm-hmm. Um, so like it, there's just a bunch of that stuff that happens. So um, yeah, I think those were the, the, the ones I cared the most about. So Henry and the two drug dealers, I can't believe I'm saying 
um, um, that's no, pretty much obviously, it. Um, obviously, if you had it your way, it would it, it would just be the cocaine bear all the way through. Well, like I said, like you you, you can have people like I, I you can have other people and do stuff with them. It just needs to be more cocaine bear centric with the storytelling, not me watching like the the park ranger and the activists like having this like weird like meet cute moment like we don't need that like i don't need to have the the uh, eddie right the drug the drug dealer's son uh, i don't need eddie and ray Liotta or sid whatever the hell his name was i don't need them having this like oh like you know i want to be all the business and all that stuff like there's just there's too much of that fluff that to me was not needed like I, yeah i, I, like I agree you want to have agree. everyone have this like character moment in a movie called cocaine bear and I will say, was this the last movie Ray Liotta did before he passed away? I believe so. It, it's the last one or one of the last ones. Like, I know he, I know, unfortunately, he had passed away, like, during the filming of something else he was in. Um, but this was one of the last, if not the last things that he fully completed um, before his death. I, I want to say, I know it was released after his death. Um, but yeah, I'm not a hundred percent sure, but you know, I feel bad for yeah. like Yoda and his, you know, amazing career. Like he's done so many good things, like, you know, going back as early as Goodfellas, right. In, uh, in the, uh, 1990, I believe, I believe it came out right in 1990. Yeah. Um, so, you know, just such a great career. And then it's like, cool at the end, it's like, well, you're going to be cocaine. <laughs> you're going to be in this movie called cocaine bear. Um, and like I said, you're probably the least interesting or the least cared about character in the whole thing. Um, so, but yeah, so. So basically, so basically your advice to Elizabeth Banks is just get rid of all the people and just have a bear do cocaine for 90 minutes, right? <laughs> I mean, yeah, like it's like, a, it's like, um, what, what I mean, was, that's what um, I'm hearing right from you right now. Well, it's, so. Like I said, it doesn't have to be just like that, but like, you don't have to give all these characters arcs. Like, that's the problem I have. There's too much fluff when we're just there for the kills, right? That's right. what we're there for is the death. So you could have a bunch of characters. That's fine. But we don't have to have like, oh, this mom and this girl making amends. You don't have to have the drug dealers, father and, uh, and son dealing with this stuff. You don't have to have this, you know, kind of whimsical, cute relationship between these two characters. Like, you don't need all that. You don't have to have the cop betraying the other cop, right? Like those are all elements that like are just in there and they're just in there for nothing. So yeah, if you want to have stuff, it's cool, but like we want to move on from that. Like we don't need to have all that. It doesn't build anything, at least for me, into the movie. I don't care about the characters. I care about Cocaine Bear, you know, going out there, mauling people or doing whatever it's going to do, right? So that, yeah. that to me is what it is. You don't have to have a full movie. Like, it doesn't have to be Cocaine Bear from beginning to end, right? It doesn't have to be like that. Um, even in Sharknado, it takes a while for the Sharknado to actually happen, right? Like, it's not it's not like that. It's just you don't have to have such a character-focused story with so many characters, right? And then, you know, it just feels like to me, Cocaine Bear was really sidelined for the last third of the film, right? Because I feel like once it, like, you know, has its high and then, you know, it gets a whole bunch of drugs or whatever, I feel like you don't see Cocaine Bear until the very, very end of the movie. And it just felt like a lot of time it elapsed at that stage. It's like, okay, I don't care about this. I don't care that the mom found the little girl. I don't care about them having this, you know, um, you know, discussion or them trying to escape. Like, it just was too much of that stuff. Yeah, and 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 I and I will agree with you on that point because you know because if you are going for, going to go for this kind of horror slasher element to it, I mean, less than mentality is better because the because in the end, they're, if they're going to be killed, they're pretty much disposable characters. So why would you exactly. want to? So why would you want to be emotionally invested in someone who's just going to get, you know, axed, you know, in the next five minutes? So, um, so what's your um, so what's your score going to be for this movie? So I'm going to give this 1.8 out of five bear claws. Um, <laughs> okay. like I, said, I just, I, I, like I said, I can certainly get a part of the madness, right? Like I, I like B movies. I enjoy stuff like that. It, it just felt like to me, it didn't do enough of it. Um, I, I would like to see more of the cocaine bear. 
and, and I would like to see that constant escalation of just stuff happening. Um, you know, just if I'm going to get into it, just help me get involved with the madness. Um, but kind of the ins and outs of it to me just didn't work. And as I said, I think you just got way too many characters that you're trying to like add these random elements into it. Um, and it just was not needed for the success of the movie. And I think it just kind of, to me, was the detriment of it that it just fell flat, especially at the end. Um, it just felt like it just went on and on with, oh, you know, this, you know, Ray Liotta shoots the cop. And then, you know, the, the other cop is like, oh, why did you do that? And then like, you know, hey, dad, I want to be out of the business. And, you know, girl with the mom. Oh, I'm so happy I found you. Like, it was just like, it just went on and on. I'm like, I don't care about any of this stuff. We're just waiting for the next time the cocaine bear comes on the screen. So, yeah. You, so basically you needed your fix. <laughs> yeah. I, I needed my cocaine bear fix. Give me, give me more bear. <laughs> All right. Well, um, well, mine's going to be um, three out of five bear claws. Um, Are you serious? <laughs> I mean, listen, I thoroughly enjoyed watching it. I mean, oh. I, I, I look. I will say. I, I I will say this. All the points that you made about you know, about too many characters, all the sentimentality stuff. I I I agree with you on that one. I mean, I I I think it, I think we could do less with the story arcs and less with character development and more in Cocaine Bear. Where I think you and I differ is the fact that I'm is that I just I was able to divorce that from you know from my mind. I was able to divorce that story um, from the you know from the overall movie and just enjoy it for what it was because i mean that's like half the movie though <laughs> right but at, right but at, but at the but at the same time for me i i enjoy, I enjoy it because of the fact that and, and i mentioned it before i enjoyed the, you know the fact because these were you know because these were characters who were just living their normal lives and were just being super serious and super anal and then something absurd comes along in a cocaine bear and their whole world you know falls apart and they start going ape shit um or bear shit, I should say, but you, you know, you know, but that's why I enjoy it. And, and 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 I also, and I don't know about you, but but for me, the tone of the movie, you know, felt very campy. Um, and and I really really liked the fact that that while the characters, you know, themselves were you know were behaving seriously, I felt the movie overall wasn't taking itself too seriously. Um, I know I I know there be there will be many debates about that, but that was my takeaway from the movie. So that so, so that's the reason why I was able to enjoy it, at, at, you know, as much as I did, because I knew because at least in my mind, I knew from the very beginning I wasn't going to expect something that was going to be overly serious, and the things that were serious I shouldn't take too seriously, because we've got a bear that's coked out of its brain going around and attacking, killing people. So that's. I like yeah. that. Sure, I, I appreciate your opinion. Whatever shit you said, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what. Well, that's why you're the movie pope, right? I mean, you, <laughs> you make the final, um, the final decision. <laughs> I mean, that's why it's called the movie pope and not the movie constable, because you know, I, <laughs> I, I, I obviously can't be trusted with making sound decisions. I mean, for God, for God's sakes, have you seen my hall, my, my, my top five horror film list? I mean, what normal per person would have that kind of list? honestly <laughs> it, it was very different i will say so but no, I, I definitely like i said it's it's good like i said i mean like i would say general people probably agree more with you right because i think when we look at the rotten tomatoes a lot of people seem to be more on the the side of like hey this was a decent thing so i mean you know just uh one person's opinion over another <laughs> and well that's not it well another thing i will say too it, i mean if you have a movie called cocaine bear you're not going to automatically think, "Oh, this is a very serious movie. I should take this very seriously." Right? Now, if it was a not. now if it was a movie like The English Patient, obviously, it's going to be a bit more <laughs> thoughtful, right? I mean, yes. Because as we know, it's it's it, it's more the tone of the tone of that movie is going to be a bit more thoughtful, a, a lot more introspective, as opposed to something like Cocaine Bear. You're going to know right off the bat. This is, I mean, you've got two pretty absurd premises right there, a bear and cocaine, and you smash them together, like Sharknado, which is a portmanteau of a shark and tornado. Um, so, 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 I mean, so, so, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people who went, went into this movie did not have the expectation of, 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 of sitting down to watch, you know, two, you know, two family members go through something serious and come out better, you know, by the end, because obviously, because obviously by the end of the movie, 
you know, Sid and Eddie really don't patch things up. Ed, you know, Sid gets killed by a bunch of bears, and Eddie's like, oh, well, you know, I guess I, got, I, guess I go back to St. Louis and, you know, go back to my son and having to deal. And I now have this little lap dog with me instead of, you know, my and wife. A friend who, with only eight fingers. I just thought that was one of the funniest scenes ever. I'm like, he shot two of his fingers and they weren't even connected. Yes, but, yes. That I, I will say that that definitely got a laugh out of it. Well, well, another thing. Well, I, I will say this, though. The fight scene in the bathroom, I felt, was a little bit overplayed. You know, I thought that was a little bit too much. I, 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 I will concede that point. Because they're because you know because you know a grown man fighting a bunch of teenagers, I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. I mean, I could live without it, but that's just me. Um, but go ahead and let us know down in the comments below what you think if you enjoyed Cocaine Bear and if if you if you agree or disagree with our with, with our reasons. And remember to like, comment, subscribe, and as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this episode and check out more episodes of the podcast. And as always, we'll catch you on the flip side. Bye.